Hi, my name is Deb Boyce Gelmi, and this is a level one yoga class. We will use some props today, but very minimally. Um, we use a block oftentimes, um, but if you don't have a block at home, you'll just want something that's about this size and is equally stable. Um, sometimes we use a chair. If somebody um, isn't tipping down as far, you can use a chair, for example, for a triangle pose. If, if the block is too low, then you can bring in a chair, maybe a dining room chair or something, pull it in over your leg and use that as your block. And then you would just move it to the other side each time we switch between poses that use a block. So we start in Tadasana. Press through the inner heels and big toe mounds of your feet. Lift your toes for a moment, feel the balls of your toes from the big toe mound all the way to the little toe mound. Lift those toes up and at the same time, lift your thighs up and press them back slightly. And then keeping the lift of that front thigh, gently lower the toes. So as the front thighs press back slightly, have your middle buttock forward, come forward slightly as well. And then lift the side chest up and take your shoulders away from your ears, pointing your fingers slightly toward the floor. And then lengthen up through the crown of the head. And then Urdhva Astasana. We take our arms out in front of you, straight arms, hugging those muscles around the elbow. And then as you take your arms up over your head, move your inner upper arm toward the wall behind you, lengthening up, palms facing each other. So imagine someone is gently pulling on the wrists up to lift that side rib up with your arms. And at the same time, take your shoulders away from your ears. And then feel that contact with the floor, trying to feel your weight distributed equally throughout your feet. And then bring your arms down, back to Tadasana. And take those shoulders away from the ears, broaden across your collarbones. And the next one is Badanguriasana. Clasp your fingers together in front of your chest. Take your palms away. And then take those palms up to the ceiling, drawing those muscles tight around the elbows, straightening the arms, drawing your upper outer arms toward each other. And again, away from the, shoul the shoulders away from the ears. And soften the face. Feel your full heel on the floor and the balls of your toes. And loosen those toes to be sure they're not gripping the mat. And then we'll switch the clasp of our hands. So bring your hands down in front of you. And then your front thumb will go behind your other thumb. And then each of the fingers will switch behind the other fingers for the second clasp. So then palms away, and then arms up, drawing those upper arms toward each other, shoulders away from the ears, soften the face. Again, notice your feet in the contact with the floor. And then release the hands, palms face each other, and arms down. So our next pose is called Utita Trikonasana, triangle pose. So you'll jump or step your feet wide, turn your feet to the right, line your front heel up with your back arch, spread across the chest. And then before we tip down to the right, press through the outer edge of the back foot and the big toe mound in the right foot. And tip over to the right opening up your shoulders and collarbones, or opening up your chest and collarbones as you go down. Taking that chest toward the wall behind you, you can put your hand down onto the block, or in this case, you really can use your shin just as easily. And then this is where you can bring a chair in, if you're not going down quite as far. So press through the outer edge of the back foot, the big toe mound in the front foot, 
open the chest up toward the ceiling and take the shoulders away from the ears. Reach that top arm straight up above and then look up to your fingertips and if there's any tension in your neck, look forward again. And then press through the outer edge of the back foot to bring yourself up, toes forward, and to the other side. So if you were using the chair, you'd need to bring the chair around to the other side. Lift the side chest up, press through the outer edge of the right back foot, and the big toe mound in the front foot, and tip to the side. Opening again across that chest as you go down. Spread the arms wide away from each other. Open the chest. The chest is looking up toward the ceiling. And then look up to your fingertips. And again, if there's any tension, just look forward again. And then to come on out, press through the outer edge of the back foot to bring yourself up toes forward, fingertips together, and jump or step back to Tadasana. So for our next pose, Virabhadrasana 2, we'll take our legs wide again. So oftentimes I'll say jump or step your feet wide. So if you're going to step, you could just step your feet wide and then turn your feet to the right. Same lineup with that heel to arch lineup. And then this time bend the right leg by softening that inner thigh to the knee. And the knee goes right over the heel. Press through the outer edge of the back foot. And then you can look over those fingertips. Press through the outer edge of the back foot and the big toe mount in the front foot and spread across the collarbones. Like you're trying to reach each side of your room. And then to come on out, take that top thigh from the inside out toward the wall behind you, and then toes forward and to the other side. Virabhadrasana two, soften the inner thigh, bend the left knee right over the left heel, spread the arms wide, Press through that outer edge of the back foot and the big toe mount in the front and lift that side chest up, shoulders away from the ears. And then look over the left fingertips. And then again, to straighten that leg, you'll move this top thigh from the inside out. Toes forward, fingertips together and jump or step your feet back together. Okay, so we're going to do that same pose again, Virabhadrasana 2, but this time I'm going to show you a little bit before I'm talking about moving the thigh from the inside out, but I just wanted you to see it from the front angle. So this thigh from the inside out, as we're in the pose and when you're coming out of the pose. So it's this rotation. So as you're going into the pose, this rotation, the tendency is for the knee to go that way. So you want to take the thigh from the inside out. And then when we straighten it, we do that again. Okay? So that will be our focus this time when we go through the pose. So Virabhadrasana 2, jump or step your feet wide. Turn your feet to the right. And this time, as you soften that inner thigh, move that thigh from the inside out. And then even while you're in the pose, that thigh is going from the inside out. Virabhadrasana 2. But then, as before, press through the outer edge of the back foot, big toe mount in the front foot. Spread the arms wide, soften the face. And you can look over those right fingertips. And then again, to come out, that, that action of that top thigh, move from the inside out to straighten that leg, toes forward, and to the other side. And so now, as we soften that inner thigh, the left leg, the thigh is going from the inside out, that top thigh inside out. The knee right over the heel as before. Press through the outer edge of the back foot, the big toe mount in the front foot, and spread. Spread the arms wide. Thigh going from the inside out. And those, you can look over those left fingertips again. And 
and then to straighten again, thigh from the inside out to straighten, toes forward, fingertips together, and jump or step back to Tadasana. So Parshvakanasana, jump or step your feet wide, turn your feet to the right, and just as with the last pose, press through the outer edge of that back foot, taking weight into that back foot for an anchor, and then soften the inner thigh, take the thigh from the inside out to bend that right leg. And then for this one, Parshvakanasana, we take our hand down to the block or the floor. So there's a high block, a medium block, and a low block. So you're gonna have whichever height best suits you. Top hand on the hip and roll the chest open. So shoulders away from the ears, moving from the back armpit to the front armpit, opening the chest. Press through the outer edge of the back foot, lengthen through the crown of the head. Parshvakanasana. And then we'll come on up. Thigh toward the back to straighten that leg, toes forward, and to the other side. Now we'll do this pose a second time with the arms. So press through the outer edge of the back foot, soften the inner thigh of the front leg, taking that thigh to the back wall, spread the arms wide, don't leave the weight from that back foot, hand down to the block or the floor, top hand on the chest, roll the chest, sorry, top hand on the hip, roll the chest open. Pressing through the outer edge of that back foot and lengthen through the crown of the head up. Open the chest. And then to come out, press through the outer edge of that back foot and the big toe mount in the front. And then to come on up and then to straighten the leg, roll that thigh toward the back. Toes forward, fingertips together and jump or step back together. Now this next time we do it, we're going to um, take the arm up in the air and I'll show you that. We'll do that part together. But again, I wanted you to be able to see that front leg the tendency is for the knee to roll this way. I'm exaggerating so you can see it, but that's the tendency. So you want to take your thigh toward, you know, from the inside out while you're in this pose. And then that's continuing to happen as you roll your chest away from that leg. Okay, so then uh, again, straightening that leg, thigh from the inside out. Okay. So we'll do this pose again and we'll finish with the arm work as well. So jump or step your feet wide. Always be careful of the blocks that you're stepping or jumping toward. Turn your feet to the right, bend the thigh, bend the knee, softening that thigh. And then take your hand down to the block, top hand on the hip, roll the shoulders, I'm sorry, take the shoulders away from your ears and roll the chest up toward the ceiling. And then of course that thigh that I was showing you from the inside out and then reach the arm up toward the ceiling, roll the shoulder, which takes the palm overhead, and then extend that arm up way overhead. Soften, soften that inner thigh, even though you're working tremendously around it. Press through the outer edge of that back foot, lengthen that arm away, and then to come out, press through the outer edge of the back foot again, thigh from the inside out, toes forward, and to the other side. Soften the inner thigh, hand down to the block, top hand on the hip, roll the chest open. That thigh going toward that back wall. And extend the arm up, roll the, the shoulder, turning the arm from the inner upper arm toward the back, and then extend up and over, looking up to that inner arm. Press through the outer edge of the back foot, and lengthen that wrist away, taking your rib cage up with you. And then to come out, press through the outer edge of the back foot, bring yourself up to Virabhadrasana 2. And then to come out, take that, back, that top thigh to the back wall, toes forward, fingertips together, and jump or step back to Tadasana. So it's Parshvakanasana, extended side angle. So our next pose is called Riksasana. Riksasana means tree pose. So tree pose is a balancing pose where we balance on one leg. So if you have a wall nearby, you can put your elbows on the wall. 
but don't have the, your back body touching the wall. The elbows are the, just there for support if you need them during the pose. Some people prefer to have a chair next to them. You can have a dining room chair or any sort of chair. Um, and we'll do the right side first, so the chair would be on your left side. So you can have that sort of as a rail as we lift up. But you can also have the wall. So you decide. Riksasana, three pose. So you start in Tadasana. And so the thigh that we've been working on, that rolling from the inside out, that, put, that happens in this pose as well. Um, so because the knee tends to come forward again. So we're working on that thigh to take it open. Okay, so rest the balls of the toes on the floor for a moment. There are three different levels that you can do for this pose. And I'll show you the highest one first. You take that foot high up on the inner thigh. And then in this case, the hip and the heel become um, a vice where they're squeezing together to bring you, to keep you up. That outer hip and that heel. Um, the next one is down on the calf. The other one is the balls of the toes on the floor. So you decide which one works best for you. So again, this thigh going from the inside out, and then the navel toward the straight leg. The toes are pointing toward the floor in, on this lifted leg. And then again, that navel toward the straight leg, and that thigh going toward the wall behind you, opening up. You can choose your hand placement. If you have your hands in the middle of your chest, you could also have them lifted. And if they're lifted, we're using our Urdha Stasana arm from earlier, where that inner upper arm goes away, or goes toward the wall, bringing the shoulders away from the ears. Rick Stasana. And of course, you can expect to fall over every now and then. Hopefully not over, but just have that foot come down and lift it back up again and then we'll do the other side so back into the asana before you rush to the second side feel the difference in the two sides of the body they've done different work so feel that for just a moment before we move to the next side just open up the left leg again remembering that work that top thigh from the inside out so it's this opposite action your navel is going toward the straight leg and that bent leg is going toward the back wall, the top thigh is. Okay, so remembering your different placements, the balls of the toes on the floor of the calf, or high up on your inner thigh. Softening your knee, that navel toward the straight, or sorry, the navel toward that straight leg, and the top thigh toward the wall behind you. Join your hands together in the middle of your chest, or you can take them up overhead. Either way, keep the shoulders away from the ears. And then arms up. Just like to a chair. And again, remember it's okay. If you fall out of balance, your toe goes down, you bring it back up. There's no right or wrong. Join your hands together in the middle of your chest, bring that foot back down, back to Tadasana. So this next pose is called Parivotanasana. Parivotanasana. There are different versions of this pose, but we're going to do the one um, where we keep our hands on our hips for this pose. So we start out in Tadasana, jump or step your feet wide. And then put your hands onto your hips. And this time, when you turn to the right, you'll turn your entire torso to the right. So bringing those back ribs around. Navel again, going toward that front leg. And use the elbows to pull those shoulders down and lift the side chest up. And then pressing through the outer edge of the back foot. And this time, the back thigh of the back leg goes from the inside out. So the back thigh goes from the inside out. And keeping that weight in the back heel, the outer edge of that back foot, keep that weight pressing down as you extend your torso forward. And, and that front leg again from the inside out, that front thigh. So the elbows going back are helping to take those shoulders away from the ears. 
and then moving from the back armpit to the front armpit, going down. We're not going to take our hands down today, we're just going to keep them on the hips. And then come out, press through the outer edge of the back foot, toes forward, and then to the other side. So we're dropping that heel back in the back. We still have the front heel to back arch line up, but the feet are in a slightly different position. The toes are a little bit more this side. So press through the outer edge of the back foot. The back thigh goes from the inside out this time. The front thigh still from the inside out. Hands on the hips, bring those um, ribs around, coming around toward that front leg, navel toward that front leg. And then keeping that weight in the back leg and the thigh going from the inside out, lengthen forward with that sternum from the back armpit to the front armpit, shoulders away from the ears, chest leaning, leading forward, big toe mound of that front foot, keeping us stable. Parjbhojnasana. And then to come out, we'll press through the outer edge of that back foot, lift up, toes forward, fingertips together and jump, step back together. Our next pose is called Adho Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. And so for this one, we put our hands on the floor and our feet on the floor. But for some of you, you might want to have your hands on a chair. Okay, so this pose, we start out, and I'll show you that in a second, we start out on the floor. But you might start out with your hands on the chair. Okay, for your Adho Svanasana. But for the rest of us, put your hands onto the floor and you're on your knees. So press through the pointer finger mound side. So you're moving from the little finger side over to the pointer finger mound and the thumb mound side. So press through that pointer finger mound, lift up through the inner shoulders from there and take your inner shoulders up toward your hips. And then extend your inner heels toward the floor. So those from the pointer finger mound to the inner shoulder up toward the hips is lengthening us back. And then take the fronts of the thighs toward the wall behind you. Adho Mukha Svanasana. And then we'll come down and we'll do it one more time. Okay, so if you, if you tried it with your hands on the chair, then you can maybe bring your hands to the floor for this one. So one more time, pressing through that pointer finger mound. So the pointer finger, that mound right there, we tend to lift that up in this pose. So try to press through that as you lift up in the pose. So I press the pointer finger mound down, extend up through the inner shoulder, from the inner shoulder up toward the hips, press the thighs back. And lengthen your inner heel toward the floor. And we'll come back down. So the next pose is a standing pose where you can use your blocks, or again, if you need something else, um, you can pause the video and go get um, something. Um, you can use the chair for this. I'm going to show you from the side um, so you can see my back in the pose, and then we'll do it, I'll do it the other way so you can see both angles, okay? So it's a pose where we're going to jump or step our feet wide so we'll start, I'll just show you really quickly. We'll jump, step our feet wide, and then we're gonna go forward in this pose. So I'm gonna show you from the side so you can see my back, okay? So this is for people who need a higher height for their hands. And I know you can't see my head, but you will in a moment. So I step my feet wide. And then as I go forward, this is that same chest as in, in that last pose where we are lengthening, lengthening, lengthening. And then you put your hands down underneath your shoulders and so you can take your hands to the blocks if you need to and so the tendency in these in the beginning poses 
is to have this rounded back. So I'm exaggerating just so you can see. But what we want to try to do in this concave version of this pose is to take your sternum forward while you take your shoulders back towards your hips to try to get that roundedness out. So the sternum going forward and the shoulders going toward the hips. Another way to think of it is your back armpit moving toward your front armpit. Okay, so that hunch back and then taking that sternum forward, shoulders toward the hip to work toward getting that concave back. And then to come out, we put our hands on our hips and lift up and then jump our step, jump our step up and together. Sarasa Pado Tadasana, a wide leg forward fold. So take your legs wide. Put your hands on your hips, point your elbows behind you. And move from the back armpit to the front armpit. Lifting the sternum up. And as I bend forward, I move my inner thighs toward the wall behind me. Put your hands down onto the floor. Roll the outer shoulder back toward that hip. Lengthen the sternum forward. Press the thighs back. Lengthening the torso away from the thighs and taking the thighs away from the armpits. Tassarata Pado Tadasana. And then to come on out, put your hands onto your hips, point your elbows to the ceiling, lift up to your chest, and then step or jump your feet back together. Our next pose is called Shatush Padasana, four-footed pose. So first I'll show you the pose. Um, before you go up, you'll want to have a block next to you, possibly in case you want to use it. I'll show you first and then you can decide from there if you want that block or not. So, so you'll watch first. I lie down on my back and I walk my feet in toward my buttock and I lengthen the shoulder down toward the hand and the hand down toward the feet. So I'm lengthening that shoulder away from the ears before I even lift up. And then I press through my inner heel, big toe mound, lift my buttocks up, roll the shoulder under, roll the shoulder under, and lift that buttock up. So I soften the inner thighs and I roll the outer thighs or take the outer thighs up toward the ceiling, lifting up. And then I lift that upper back up toward the ceiling as well. And then if you want to, you can take a, a block, either tall or medium, and put it under your tailbone. And then that can allow you to stay in the pose a little bit longer. So we're going to do the pose twice together. So if you want to try it once with the block, once without, if you want to put the block in, maybe you could stay the whole time with the block being support, you know, supporting your body. Okay, so now we'll do it together. So lie down on your back, walk your feet in towards your buttock. Those shoulders are already flowing down toward the hands, toward the feet side. And then lift your buttocks up toward the ceiling roll the shoulder under, roll the shoulder under, lift the buttock up, soften the inner thighs, but take the outer thighs up toward the ceiling, lifting, 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 up onto the tops of those shoulders, the upper back lifting up, moving from your back armpit to your front armpit, getting to the tops of those shoulders, lifting that buttock up, soften the face. This is a great pose to do before bedtime, especially if you put the block in there to support um, for a slightly less muscular use, but it's, the pose itself is calming on the nervous system. And then we'll come down, unroll the shoulders. Now, if you went to come out and you didn't unroll your shoulders, it might mean that this time you could go a little more to the tops of the shoulders. Okay, so we'll rest for just a moment. Soften your abdomen, soften your face. And then walk your feet in towards your buttocks. Flow those shoulders down toward the hands. Lift the buttock up. Roll the shoulders under. Roll the shoulder under. 
lift the buttock up, soften the inner thighs, take the outer thighs up toward the ceiling. Lift that upper back up. Move from the back armpit to the front armpit, getting even more to the tops of the shoulders. Roll the outer shoulders down. Lift that buttock up. Use the muscles of the buttocks to lift you up toward the ceiling. And then if you want to try putting the block in, you would lower down a little bit most likely to set that sacrum onto the block. Or you can keep yourself lifted muscularly up toward the ceiling. So lifting the buttocks up. Soften the inner thigh, but use those outer thighs, rolling those up toward the ceiling and lifting. And then to come on down, you'll unroll the shoulders, you know, slowly moving from the top of the back down, the tailbone coming down last. And relax the feet for a moment. Soften the face even more. So our goal is to have a relaxed face even when we're working really hard, but sometimes we forget. And then we'll roll to the side and push ourselves up. Our next pose is called Vinkrita Karani, which means inverted leg pose, oftentimes called legs up the wall. Um, this is a legs up the wall with a little um, height underneath your hips, if you wish. Um, I'll show you how to get into the pose first, and then you can go into it after that. If you already know how to go into it, then you can stay up there extra long. But I'm going to turn this camera a little bit so you can see. Now it's not ideal to put your legs up this half wall, but it's the best angle for the camera. So let's, I'll show you from this side. So have your blocks nearby if you want. Again, if you have books or if you have a pillow for this one or blankets, um, I'll show you how to get them in, okay? So I'll put those over here. And then, so what I'm going to do first is just scoop myself right into the wall. So my buttocks go right to the wall and then I lie down and then I roll my legs up the wall. And then once you're up there, you sort of adjust. I take my buttocks right up the wall, or right up to the wall. And then once you're there, if this is enough for you, this is okay. You take your shoulders up, you know, you, you flow those shoulders toward the hands again, palms facing the ceiling. But if you want a little more height, you can lift up and add a block under there. Um, just trying to show you from here. And then you can also, you could try that first, and then this one, so if I go up a little bit higher, I, gotta, I, gotta, I need to come a little bit closer with the shoulders. And again, it's that flowing arm toward the wall. And then not turning your head. I keep turning the head to see the, the screen where you are so I can make sure that you can see where I am, but try to keep your nose up toward the ceiling. Okay, so then to come out, I'm going to put my feet on the wall, lift up, take a block out, take a block out, Bring my buttocks down a bit toward the floor. Not a bit, but all the way to the floor. And then I bend the legs, roll to the side. So let's do it together. So have your blocks or blankets ready. Put whatever's going to go under your hips. Lie down, scoot your buttocks right to the wall. Scoot all the way till you get there. And then take your shoulder down and then roll up. Once you're there, scoot your buttocks toward the wall. And then if you want to, you can just stay here or you can bend the legs, lift the hips up, and have a little lift there so the block looks like that. Or you can um, bend the legs again, put the feet on the wall, and go a little higher. And the higher you go, the more you're going to need to walk the shoulders closer toward the block. Okay, with my half wall, it's not super ideal because I'd rather have my, my um, heels resting on the wall. But then with my hips up this high, then I can roll the shoulders under a little bit more. Vikrita Karani means inverted lake pose. So the abdomen is the lake. So we're softening the abdomen, but working the legs, extending through the inner heel, big toe mound, joining the feet together if they go together comfortably. The inner thighs going toward the wall behind you slightly. And then those hands lengthening away, taking the shoulder gently under with the hands. And then you can start to close your eyes, start to relax your face. So your shoulders go away from your ears, but the back of your skull, or I should say and, the back of your skull lengthens away from your shoulders. So you're working your legs in this pose, but you're softening the abdomen, you're softening the throat, 
soften the face. So again, you're starting to let go with your abdomen and your face and hopefully your mind, letting your, your mind quiet, but you're working the legs um, still. So extend through the inner heel, sorry, extend through the inner thighs, the inner knees, the inner heels away, and that big toe along the way. And then the little toe side comes toward the hips and then they draw the outer hips together or toward each other. So the legs are working, but the face is soft. Start to unhinge your lower jaw from your upper jaw to relax your face. Soften the abdominal muscles. Inverted lake. Deeply to ground. This is another really lovely pose for just before bed calming on the nervous system. So even if you don't have the height, it's still good for just before bed. If you have the height, it's a nice, you know, even more of an inversion. Keep softening that face. Noticing places where you're still holding tension and try to let go. But we're still using the legs. So it's a contra contradiction a bit. One of the balances we're looking for in yoga often is figuring out which muscles to use and which muscles to let go of. So finding that balance. So this pose is a really nice pose because there's such a contrast because between, there's a contrast between what my legs are doing and what my face and abdomen are doing. If you don't have a bare wall at your house, you could put your calf muscles on a couch, so then you would have bent legs instead of straight up, but that's perfectly fine as well. Or on a chair, the calf muscles could be on a chair. And then to come out, you'll bend your legs, put your feet on the wall. If you do have height under your hips, you'll lift up your hips a bit, pull the blocks or the blankets or the pillows. You'll have to walk out a little bit with your shoulders, allow your hips to come down. And then with those bent legs, you'll roll to the side, allowing your head to stay supported on the floor. So you're in an inversion, you wanna come out slowly. And then our next pose is Shavasana. So Shavasana is the pose at the very end of yoga where we lie flat on our back and, com and completely let go. So there's no contrast <laughs> in this one because we're letting go of everything. So you can have a blanket or something underneath your head if you're in a cold space you can um, cover up with a blanket as well and then you'll lie down and then the blanket is under only my head it's not under my shoulders my shoulders are away from the blanket and then I lengthen the back of my skull away gently starting to let go of the face and then I take one leg out at a time and 
and then allow the legs to just relax down. So I'm allowing the legs to splay out, just completely letting go of the muscle use. And then the shoulders just gently flow toward the hands, away from the ears, back of the skull away from the shoulders. And then start to let go. And if you need to, to lengthen your low back, you can grab the edge of your mat and drag the mat away from your head a little bit, lengthening that lower back, soften the abdomen, and allow the arms to relax. So imagine relaxing from the crown of your head all the way down to your feet. Soften the muscles around your eyes. Soften the muscles between your eyebrows. Softening out to your temples and then down toward the back of your head. Soften the muscles around your cheeks. Unhinge your lower jaw from your upper jaw. Your lips stay together slightly and your teeth may separate a little bit. The top and bottom teeth may separate away from each other slightly. Soften the muscles in your neck and throat. Soften your shoulders all the way down to your half open hands. Soften your abdomen and your low back. Let go of any muscle use from your hips all the way down to your feet. Softening your inner thighs to your inner knees, to your inner ankles, to your inner heels. Allowing your ankles to just stay to the side. Your body has no more work to do in this pose. Letting go of all muscle use. On your next exhalation, imagine that you can peacefully and relax, let go, and melt right into the chair.
meant to come out of Shavasana. Bend your arms, put your hands onto your front body. Anywhere on your front body that's comfortable, your ribs, your abdomen, your chest. Allow the elbows to just rest comfortably on the floor. Then bend your left leg, put your foot on the floor. Draw your right arm up and over your head. And then as we roll to the right side, the right arm becomes a bit of a pillow for us. As you push off your left side, roll to your right. Bring your knees together for comfort. Keeping the head resting, supported. And then allow that top shoulder to roll down a little bit. Use both arms to push yourself up into a seated position. And there's a tradition in yoga where we say namaste, which means the light in me honors the light in you, or the best in me greets the best in me. So we join our hands together in the middle of our chest and say namaste. Thank you so very much for joining us today.